Here we are, folks, on the seasonal update to my anime binging slash watching. Of course, we're reviewing another season when it comes to anime broadcast. This time, spring 2020. Let's do this. <music> Welcome back to the channel, Geo here, and yeah, if you've been following my channel for a while, you know that I've basically condensed all the shows that I'm watching with the broadcasts and stuff, and at the end of each season, I like to make one uh, video talking about these titles. Now, on occasions, I like to, you know, uh, make longer, detailed videos on a couple series, uh, but for the most part, I'll group everything together. It saves me some time, because again, this channel is... A little bit all over the place because I like to talk about uh, manga and comic books as well so works out for the best I think but if you want me to review a specific series from the ones I'm gonna mention in this episode please let me know in the comment section down below I'm already working on some videos for shows that aired so maybe they'll coincide who knows but let's stop talking about technical stuff let's get into the anime watching i have a list on my computer here so i'm going to be looking at that list because i can't remember all the names off the top of my head but regardless i did catch a lot of shows some of them were postponed because of the pandemic and they're now just coming back as of the recording of this video so it's a to be continued of sorts and you'll eventually see my full review for them at the end of the summer 2020 uh, season anime season but let's start the first one on my list is kaguya sama love is war the second season much much better than season one even though i loved that first season the series as a whole this was better written funnier just all around just better in execution. The animation and all the technical things that they were able to pull off with that series is just amazing. At several points, literally, they were just flexing their muscles at what they can do. I really do suggest watching Kaguya-sama, and while I loved season one, season two really made me a fan of the series as a whole, and I cannot wait for season three, because we did get that to be continued at the end, and obviously the manga is still ongoing, so I'm very much looking forward to season three, and I like that they're short burst of 12 episodes, much more concise, and you can get a lot more done than just, you know, prolonging a season out with more than 20 something episodes or 24 episodes. The much anticipated Tower of God, I made an anime impressions video on it and I am very much looking forward to making a full review of that season and I will be going forward and reading the manhwa, the original webtoon, because I I loved the show and a lot of people were complaining online, oh they packed too much stuff in, it was overly crowded with information. Yeah, and at some points even I got a little bit lost with some of the terminology and world building because it's a new series and I wasn't accustomed to everything that was happening, but I still enjoyed what I was watching. It really gave off great uh, Battle Shonen vibes and reminded me of stuff like Hunter x Hunter with its world building. Obviously with more seasons you can fully expand on these terms and sort of you know, flesh out the characters and the settings and the rules and all that stuff. But what we did get with the season, I loved it. The animation is wonderful, the story is pretty exciting, and even though it goes into the battle shonen, battle royale type of trope, it's still fun, man. Plus, the character of Bam, I just think he is wholesome, and I wish him the best going forward with the series. I cannot wait to see uh, if we get Season 2 uh, next year or the following one. I, I don't know, but hopefully it does come out soon, because I, I loved it so much. Gleipnir. I really wanted to like Gleipnir. The concept is intriguing enough, uh, where you have these characters turning uh, through some magical thingamajig and they turn uh, with different sorts of abilities the protagonist turns into this giant uh, bear like uh, like a giant stuffed toy and he's able to fight and he's he opens his zipper in the back and another person can climb in and 
uh, enhance his fighting abilities, all that stuff. It's a kooky concept with aliens and collectible coins and a lot of angsty people. But at the same time, the show or the original story has like three different stories and they're all going off at the same time and I I simply did not care for a bunch of the characters in this show, unfortunately. I really wanted to like it because it sounds really cool, the animation's lovely at first, but then I just kind of got kind of bored by it, to be completely honest with you. The ending was nice, but the whole plot with the main character just left more to be desired. Plus, the uh, usage of fan service I thought was pretty eh, for me. I, I, I'm not, <laughs> I'll be completely honest with you guys, I'm not opposed to some clever fan service, but in this show, I thought it was just kind of. What, 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 what are you doing? <laughs> it, I mean, plus, I love that this aired on streaming platforms in North America, but certain other series like Interspecies Reviewers, no, you can't air that because it has sexual stuff. Okay. Next up, I continued Fruits Basket. I loved season one last year. So here we have the second season, the first 12 episodes. The series obviously continues because it's going to air for another 24 episodes total. Uh, I, I loved it. The animation dips in quality and the story sort of meanders a little bit and yeah, it, it gets a little repetitive at times with the drama. But it's still great, wholesome, and emotional at times. And you care for these characters and the things that they're going through. So I really do enjoy uh, Fruits Basket. This uh, closer adaptation to the manga is so cool to me. I would love it. My next life as a villainess. One of the surprise hits, in my honest opinion, for 2020. A very wholesome show that not a lot of people saw it coming. You know, having the concept of an otome game, I hope I said that right, mixed with an isekai, and the characters subverting expectations, and it did not rely on fan service whatsoever. Instead, it relied on uh, wholesome characters becoming friends, and equal opportunity when it comes to romance, which I thought was rare and kind of cool that the lead is a female. And she has all these wonderful friends who love and admire her, but she's she's likable. And she's doing everything possible to survive this world because she has been sort of reincarnated in this um, her favorite dating sim game. And she's trying to survive it, which I thought was pretty different from the other isekai. Because you see one isekai, everything else is pretty much the same. You just change... It's a different coat of paint, basically. But for this, I liked it. I thought it was pretty wholesome, charming, and one of the best opening theme songs of the season has to go to that show. I love that song. Next up, we've got Sing Yesterday to Me. Okay. I've mentioned before that I love Slice of Life and drama and romance and all that sappy stuff. I love it. I love well-written dramas. And Sing Yesterday to Me showed a lot of promise when I started watching it. The animation is masterful in my opinion. The way the character designs work within the backgrounds and the way the actual backgrounds look is just A-list material in my honest opinion. And you're following the story of these four characters and their uh, love romantic situations and how they go about it. It can be a little bit frustrating but then again we know people like that, which for me makes it relatable, and I definitely saw myself in a few of the characters in the emotional aspect and their views on romance and the things that they're saying and doing. It's not going to be for everybody because it's a very slow-paced burn, but I think it's a great show for adults to enjoy. If you just want a, a romance drama with a character that doesn't really know what he's doing, doesn't know all the answers because he's in... He just graduated college, he's not really working and instead just uh, doing a part-time uh, 7-Eleven gig. It, you know, it, it really rings home to a certain demographic and especially if you grew up in the 90s and a lot of the insecurities and the personalities of that era are 
pretty well transmitted into this show. Some say the ending was a little bit rushed, and I could see that. I, I haven't read the manga. I don't know the differences between the two, but I could see how rushed everything was at the finale, and I think giving it an extra episode might have really helped, because the conclusion of something major that happens in episode 12, the first half, could have easily been drawn out through the entire episode and you would have dedicated a final 13th episode to solving the main question of the series and giving us a conclusion of sorts. Everything was jam-packed. Some, some of the decisions that these characters make don't entirely make sense, but then again, kind of reflects real life and that people that we know don't really make a lot of sense and we kind of make dumb decisions from time to time. Next up, Apari Ranman. I made a first impressions video and unfortunately I cannot give you my thoughts on the series because it was postponed because of the pandemic. We only got three episodes. Episode 4 hasn't aired as of this recording. It will be back for the summer 2020 season. Next up we've got unlimited budget millionaire detective I, I like this a lot. I made another first impressions video on it. I really enjoyed what I watched. I think it was the first two episodes. Again, it was postponed and it will come back for the summer 2020 season. And while I'm at it, I'm just going to give you the list of titles that were postponed that I was watching. You had Digimon Adventure, which actually as of this recording came back. So I was able to watch episode four. Uh, and I've been really enjoying this reimagining reboot of the first season of Digimon. Diary of Our Days at the Breakwater. A wholesome, slice of life anime about these girls in a fishing club at their high school. And it's all about fishing and enjoying life and the process and the scenery looks beautiful and the fish. Really cute stuff. I like it. Tamayomi. So in response to that, I switched things around. I was so disappointed, so hyped when that show first began. And then I saw what you're seeing now and I was just devastated. And I said, you know what? I'm gonna switch things out with a much better show that I've been meaning to watch. And that is Ace of the Diamond. I finished the first season, the first 75 episodes, and it is fantastic. One of my favorite sports show ever. You get all the highs and all the lows, all the competitive nature of high school baseball, wonderful characters that actually grow as the series progresses, and it's just a roller coaster of emotions. And you know, you're, you're at this high with these characters, and when stuff happens, you feel it. And it got really intense where I'm on the edge of my freaking seat watching a qualifier tournament match to see if the characters are going to go to the freaking nationals. It's, it's intense. I love it. The protagonist is silly, wacky, and a breath of fresh air. Yes, he can be quite annoying at times, but that is part of the charm, I guess. So I am very much looking forward to continuing my journey with season two and then with the second series. So yay me, another hundred episodes to go. Another show that I was watching and it wasn't, it wasn't postponed. I just stopped watching was Sakura Wars, the animation. It looks interesting. I like that it's based off the, or it's a continuation of the new video game and it's uh, it has artwork from Taikubo. That's wonderful. And you can pretty much watch it on its own and enjoy it but I do feel that if you play the video games you're gonna take so much more out of it because I was watching it and by the fourth episode I will be completely honest with you guys I didn't know what was happening and I was a little bit bored by it so I dropped it don't come at me I just thought it was a little bit boring gal and dino I made a first impressions video this is the underrated series out of all of this <laughs> mess that I'm talking about. It's so unique and so cleverly written and, and just bizarre humor. There are scenes where I cannot comprehend what they're aiming for with the humor, but I'm still laughing anyways because it's freaking genius. I love the usage of animation styles. You got 
your stop motion or your claymation. You've got traditional animation, then it switches to live action stuff. The live action stuff doesn't make sense at times. It goes into different multiverse realities. This show is insane in all the best way possible. And I was so sad that it got postponed. We got like eight episodes in out of... I think it was going to be 12 or 13 episodes. So I'm very much looking forward to seeing the rest of the story and see how it plays out, especially the live action stuff. Because at the beginning, we sort of get like this Groundhog Day type storyline. And then it goes off into weirder territory. The thing with the comedian stand-up routines. Go watch it. it. Go watch my first impressions video where I showed some pictures and talked a little bit about it. It's, it's a really interesting show i love it for that reason alone uh next up on my list we got arte which means art this is a very cool show i love the premise when i first heard about it this girl in 16th century florence she wants to be a painter obviously she has a very steep hill to climb because of you know 16th century Florence you've got uh, sexism you've got racism you've got discrimination poverty there are a lot of obstacles to overcome in that time life expectancy but of course this is the anime version of the Renaissance period so it's going to be really odd to hear characters speaking in Japanese talking about uh, European stuff and Italian and I, 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 loved, I loved it. Arte is a wonderful, wholesome character, a breath of fresh air. She's just so bubbly and joyous and a beautiful character. But uh, yeah, in my head, this is an alternate reality, an alternate take on the history that we know from that time period, because uh, a lot of the things that happen in that series, I don't think would have happened in real life, unfortunately. But still, if you want a, a, a nice, uh, slow-paced slice of life, I do recommend Arte. It's always a breath of fresh air when I was watching a new episode. It was very, it's, it was a very relaxing series, especially with the vistas and the characters and the, you know, the, them recreating the art styles, the paintings and the architecture. Just really cool on their part. Listeners, boy, I was really excited when I first started watching it. I made a first impressions video on that thing, and if you watch my series review on it, it goes south pretty quickly, because listeners, I love Studio Mappa, don't get me wrong, but I don't know what happened in that series, because halfway through the end, I had no idea what was happening. They were literally skipping seasons of character progression and story arcs just to cram it in a final 22 minute episode. It's insane. I, I love the artwork. It's beautiful. The voice acting is superb. Rie Takahashi, she's she's uh, she's one of my idols. I, I love her. But, oh my god, I mean, she did a great job. But the characters in this really needed some work. They really needed some fine-tuning. And I apologize if you were a big fan of listeners. I love the execution and the themes and the story because they're written by Daisato. But... Holy moly, they really needed to work that out and be a longer show. Another series that I was continuing was Black Clover, which was almost close to uh, catching up to the manga. It was always like four, five, three, six chapters behind the manga, and it got past the elves, and it went into the new kingdoms and the, the, the incoming war and all that stuff. Really awesome stuff. I love Black Clover. I reviewed the first half of the series, if you want to check it out, on this channel. And unfortunately, it was postponed as well, but it is coming back as of this video. Next up, you've got Princess Connect Redive. I had no idea what this series was about. I just knew that it looked pretty. It looked interesting and funny, and it's from the same director as Konosuba. Me being such a fan of Konosuba, I immediately wanted to check it out. And yeah, it's sort of a reskinned version of that show, but it's still really quirky and funny. It's not the same type of comedy. This is a lot tamer in comparison, but it's still a fun series that I do recommend if you like Konosuba. And instead of adventuring, we get uh, cute characters on a gourmet guild 
quest adventure, if that makes sense. Wave, listen to me. My other favorite of the season. Finally, an uh, anime based on a manga about radio. What's not to love? The character of Minade is wonderful. She's great, spontaneous, and just a bundle of energy. And it's such a quirky, awesome story that could, and definitely one of the best of the seasons, in my honest opinion. Next up on the list is BNA Brand New Animal. I will tell you right now, 2020, this will be on my list for best anime of the year. It is fantastic. I've made two videos on the series if you want to check them out. I absolutely loved it from the characters to the setting to the art to the music. Everything about it just A-list material in my opinion. I love Trigger and all their work is just fabulous and this wasn't the exception. Uh, Michiru is easily one of my favorite protagonists in quite some time and I cannot wait for one day to own it on Blu-ray if that ever happens. Kakushi Goto. Kakushi Goto? I don't know how you pronounce it, but it was wholesome AF. I'd love the series so much and what it did. Having uh, read the concept behind the manga, I was a little bit skeptical because it doesn't sound like it could be wholesome when I tell you, oh, you've got this mangaka who draws a uh, pervy adult manga and he's trying to hide it from his kid so she doesn't find out what he does for a living so he's lying and making up excuses uh, that he's this big shot at a corporation it sounds odd but once you start watching it's so endearing sweet wholesome and it has a ton of heart with really funny characters Hime is uh, one of the most precious things of uh, 2020 in my honest opinion and I wholeheartedly recommend uh, Kakushi Goto however you pronounce that word it's a fantastic anime and easily one of the best ones of the year in my honest opinion calling it now when you've got the mangaka saying hey ignore my manga because I didn't know the anime could really make something precious out of a story I made go watch that instead you know you're in for a treat. At, at 12 episodes, it's, it's the right length and it hits you in the feels multiple times and it has such a bittersweet, happy, uh, interesting ending that I hope they can somehow work in a movie. I don't know if there's material enough to do uh, another season, but uh, maybe a movie or, or something. I would like to see a little bit more, just a tiny bit more of this world in this story. I usually like to do, uh, I, I watch all the new stuff that interests me as much as possible for you guys. And then I go back and sprinkle throughout my viewing sessions, uh, older shows. So I finally caught up with the ReZero OVAs. I hadn't watched them. They were up on Crunchyroll. Really cool stuff. I really love them and I'm even hyped more hyped for season two we were supposed to get it for uh, spring but it got postponed to summer so we're just about to start that and i'm so excited for season two but yeah the ovas are fantastic if you love the characters you're gonna love uh, what you're seeing there another series i started watching was dropkick on my devil season one which is pretty funny it reminded me of gabriel dropout it has that style of humor and we'll see because there's a season two uh it's a little formulaic but that's sort of the charm behind it so i'm very much looking forward to catching up on that as for blu-rays i started watching finally continuing my viewing of space brothers which is awesome and i'm also i'm almost caught up with overlord i'm on season three so I'm very interested in finishing those out so I can give you guys proper reviews on the series, which I plan to do on the channel, which leads me into sort of the next segment on this anime video. The future when it comes to this channel and anime. I, I want to keep a healthy balance between the anime that I watch and review with the manga that I talk about and the graphic novel slash comic books that I talk about on the channel. I, I just love all three so much that I can't make separate channels for uh, the three subjects, so I'm mashing them all in together. So if you want me to review any of the anime that I've mentioned on my videos, 
uh, on my seasonal reviews, please let me know in the comments section below. I will happily do so. I used to do uh, sort of previews for the seasons of the stuff I was, I was going to watch, but I, I'm somebody that um, wants these videos to stick around and not lose their worth because after the season airs, the stream or the episode that I upload talking about previews sort of loses its value or meaning and I want them to have a life beyond the uh, immediate nature of hey here's a seasonal update so that's why I stopped doing them but if you guys want me to do a live stream or something let me know in the comment section down below I've been I'd be more than happy to do so uh, once again, thank you everybody for tuning in. This was a wild ride this uh, anime season. I'm very excited for what's coming next. Thank you everybody for uh, liking, commenting, subscribing, being a part of the channel. Uh, watching these videos really does mean a lot. Thank you. Uh, you can follow me on social media. What else? You can uh, check the merch store if you want an official We Can Geek Them shirt. If that happens to be of your interest you can check that out and i am going to add because um, i'm on uh, what's the website's name annie list i'm on there with an a weekend geekdom account i'm gonna post it on my description and links because at the end of the day this channel does talk about anime so if you want to keep up with what i'm watching and all the lists and stuff and you can see what my favorite anime and manga and the writers and voice actors all that stuff you want to see my favorites list i uh, check that link out that's any list anylist.com and you search for a oh, we can geek them this channel's name and you'll see me there so thank you everybody for tuning in i've got to go i've got more anime to watch and review so we'll catch all of you on our next episode